expecting. Just in case. Not aware of what is happening. We are celebrating our father, an icon, an elder of double honor, elder uh, of Barra, on his 80th birthday. That's four score. Let's go to the for the king of all kings. Just in case you don't see no him, the man that was very ripped up and moving around. That's the man we're talking about. Daddy, God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. We'll not forget to honor who honors you. We have some dignitaries in our midst. Our fast in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, Akin will be in the house. The stand up, the King of all kings. And you are welcome, sir. Our pastor in charge of promise is in the house. And the beloved wife, Daddy and Mommy Olumide, you are welcome. Also, we have our Daddy in the house also, APICP. CSRO and University at me, University at me, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Academy, you're welcome, sir. And I'll be looking at the house with the house with mommy. Daddy and mommy, you are welcome, sir. You're welcome. I also want to recognize APICP CSRO, the person of Pastor Joshua, you're welcome. Yeah, Debayos, Pastor Mr. Debayo, you're welcome. Praise the Lord. The Bami Dillies, you're welcome. Praise the Lord. The Shukas, you're welcome. In the name of Jesus. If we want to mention the names, we're not going to close. Praise the Lord. That is the special seat for the elders. You're all welcome. In the name of Jesus. Let's put together for the King of all kings. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The first thing we'll be doing this evening is a program booklet. If you turn to page six of your program booklet, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. And um, it will be quickly followed by the second hymn on page seven, Go Worship the King. I want to start this in section by praising the Lord and appreciating God. On behalf of our daddy, this evening. So, if you don't mind, please, we will stand up to sing this song, this hymn, to honor God.
page three of your program booklets. Page three.
You see that our dad is not sitting alone. I mean, beside him is the beloved wife, our mommy, a German. And if you have worked with her, you know that she is really from Germany. She is a German to the core when it comes to working. Let's put our together for her in the name of Jesus. And for the two of them to have stayed thus long, you know that our daddy has been a wonderful man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is testimonies about her daddy he has pastored you before you have lived with him from childhood there is something you want to say concerning our daddy a testimony so that we that are younger will learn and we will be able to say ah, let's follow the same path feel free even as you stand up introduce yourself and share with us what you want to say about this wonderful man that he has stayed four score years he's older than the president of nigeria and he's still looking very strong Put hands together for the King of Kings. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so please, can we have testimonies? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is something really difficult for me to give a testimony regarding someone I know has been a trailblazer for so many years. I first heard of the name of Elder Para. When I was in full gospel, uh, gospel businessman fellowship in the late 80s at NRA Junction, I never knew him, but his name rang a bell in our fellowship at that time. We were often told how he gave out his vehicles for, you know, for the use of the fellowship and then was sponsoring some of the programs of the full gospel at that time. And I came to read him and I also met him. And I said, Is this the man they were talking about? Anybody that knows me very well knows that I always like to be seen and not heard. But in this case, I need to talk. Daddy Opara has been someone that I've been watching and I've been trying to copy. In the sense that I've known so many families that have come together from different cultures, but I've not found one that have been able to blend together like this family. You will agree with me that so many expatriates will marry Nigerians and come to Nigeria. And before you know it, in four, five, ten years, the woman will go, go away. But this has not been the case. Number two. I remember his leadership role when we were in Data 1. And then when we came to Data 5, as elders in Delta 5 and even Delta 
I was surprised when he co-opted me into the executive. I was wondering why. Because I never really merited it. But he knows why. And I came in and I enjoyed his leadership. One thing I know again about him is that he's fearless. He's blunt. And he can be very, you know, he will tell you the way it is. He doesn't miss West. He's a group teacher of the word of God. He's a good preacher too. And for everyone that is younger than he is, I'm sure we can have a lot of things to learn from him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That the congratulations. Many congratulations. I am so glad today. And I pray that we will see more 80 years by these celebrations in our list. There are many very special things about mommy and daddy, but this one I just want to remind him because I want to record it and carry it on to several generations by God's grace. One day we were talking, we got talking with daddy, and he was telling me that uh, at only seven years old, daddy, you quarreled with your mother because you didn't want to stop breastfeeding. So this is a mommy's testimony. <laughs> I, I said, Daddy, so what have you said? They sent me to his grandmother's house to continue there. <laughs> and I learned a big lesson. That's why at 80, you can see Daddy's shoulders. They are still square. And he's standing tall. So my own duty that uh, I'm getting from Daddy is to tell all younger women that baby friendly pays off. Baby friendly leads to 80th birthday celebrations. Daddy, I salute you and I celebrate you. And God will strengthen you more. And you will see many, many more joyous days ahead. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I wish I knew this earlier. <laughs> praise the Lord. Children of the living God, praise the Lord. I want to bless the name of the Lord concerning our elder brother Oliver of Allah today. He comes for so many years. Although it came at uh, a beautiful shock to hear that he's going to be 80. None of us could imagine that he's going to be 80 for now. See him looking 50. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we've known for more than 35 years or so. Uh, that was the time we was with the Germans when they were building GSC. You can know that that's really something to be proud of in Nigeria. It was among those technocrats that built GSC. The structure that is drugged to tomorrow. And we want to bless the name that when he was involved in the project, he was fellowshipping with us at uh, Christian Worship Center there. Rockbar and the wife are indomitable. They are great men, together with the wife, they are both great men and women of God. We fear the Lord. He was our first chairman of the building project. And uh, they devoted everything they had, committed everything they had. The wife was also a fantastic uh, minister, he was a welfare officer also, a giver to the core. This couple loves to give. They are wonderful, they have ministered to us in many ways. And uh, as God, we also have it, our children, two of our children became friendly with uh, two of their children. And they have been on like that for many years. They have raised godly seats. Praise the Lord. And I pray that many of us that are here, that our parents today will be able to boast of godly seats. That is one thing that is a challenge to every parent now. We must ensure that we raise Godly seeds that we take over when we are no longer there. And uh, I want to also, to the grace of and the, the glory of God, one of our mentors in Christian Worship Center, then and is now, uh, he doesn't like publicity as such. But today I want to announce him. He's a bit younger than Raul Liva Alpara, but today happens to be the body of that, our mentor in person of elder brother 
in a in a job wagoku. Please I celebrate you, brother. The wagoku. Praise the Lord. These are men that have given, they have been sold out to the Lord. They have committed everything they have to the Lord. And it's a challenge for us. I think and I pray that we we'll live out their memories and also work with the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I didn't want to say anything, but I just want to say one thing. We can have the opportunity to work with them. A brief one and another longer one. The last one is uh, I got to a missing place at the point of crisis. So some people, it look a critic, difficult. But I want to tell you that the period I spent with them, every assignment you give to them, they are ready to do it. And I was even shocked. When we got there, the whole place was just dusty. I want to do that on my Thanksgiving. I need somebody to want to do the other. I need 500,000. They just told me quietly. I want to say, I'm sponsoring it. That is the beginning of the breakthrough. They are involved physically, they are involved financially. All throughout our tenor, they work cooperatively with us. And they are ready to do anything you assign them, as I know them to be. And I was surprised that you could use an elder like that. Anytime you call them, they are there to do the work. Today, they are marking it. I say congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I never knew that it was that bad. I thought it was just at the, uh, between 60 and 70. But I was surprised with that I said to you. <laughs> May the Lord strengthen you the more in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You had that great testimony. The kind of people that will be with you, that anointing will not turn to annoyance. Because when the anointing be, when the money is not there, anointing at times can become annoyance. But effortlessly, the thing becomes joyful because there was provision. God will bless you, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God for the life of our Father. There is one thing I see about him. When I look at him, it's just a that like my own biological father. They look alike. They talk alike. The very first day I set my eyes on him, I said, wow, this is a twin brother of my father. Praise the Lord. And for the years I've known him, in fact, I wish my father is as strong as he is spiritually. Praise God. He's a committed daddy. That even as far as weekly activities, when I was in Amazing Grace, Sunday school, when I was in the prep, he comes to teach us to put us through, as far as so the school prayer, daddy comes to so the school prayer to show how committed he is. He's a loving father. He's, he's, but he's a kind of encouragement to me at times when I'm done. He will just call me and start praying for me. He's a father indeed. Daddy, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor in the love of God will not be in vain. Daddy, I celebrate you. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. My name is Oraki Isha. With my wife, Mrs. Nadeva Toraki. Uh, I'm the deputy for Tolab Immigration. So don't be surprised I'm here. I came all the way from Java State, where I currently serve. My past. For an amazing grace. It will, it will be a dishonor if I don't say one or two things about this couple. Because we met in amazing grace in 1998. And by the special grace of God, we got close to the level that we quite often travel together. We travel to this village or hometown, we travel to camp, we do a lot of things together, not because the wife is an expert, she is not, you know, and God knew the mighty. Most people that knew us then will know that my wife and I were barren for 10 years, and God used them. 
it's quite unfortunate I uh, wanted to have time with Junior. I was just telling him, Junior is taller than me, you know. So through them, the Lord blessed us with not only a son, with two daughters. Junior came 2001 in February, the same month of my birth. Hanatu came 2002, June. Victoria came September 2014. So, it will be a dishonor if I don't tell the congregation what God has used this couple in our life. And thereafter, we've been together. So, I cherish Mr. Oliver. I know his mom very well, his late mom. I know his brothers. I know all the children. It's only I've not been to Germany to see uh, Madame's uh, family. But I believe that they are good people. And I know God will make us see more years with him and why. Thank God. The second section of the evening will be starting with I am dying, O Lord. It's on page nine of your program booklet. You can see that. And uh, sing along with us and meditate. So this evening, let it bless you.
friend we have in Jesus.
you for giving us the privilege to be gathered unto you today thank you father because this is a gathering of joy it is the season of rejoicing it is the season of praising you father we appreciate you that we are part of this rejoicing today be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus father we want to say thank you for your son who is the reason for whom we are rejoicing and praising you today. 
Father, we appreciate you for the time of his childhood, for the times of his youth, for the time that he became full man, for the time that is now in. We appreciate you for staying with him all through this season. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we pray to you this time, we ask, Lord, that like never before, open the heavens over his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Open the heavens over the lives of everyone gathered here today in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, we ask that you will impact the lives of each one of us and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be kind to recover your seat. I want to welcome every one of us once again into this glorious occasion. And I want to again ask God that times like these and occasions like these will be the norm in our midst from time to time in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, also, let me take this time to congratulate again the celebrant of today because of this documentary that is taking place. You can see the documentary, sir. There are some documentary, and this is another documentary because I told him that this evening is an evening of documentary, and we bless God that you are part of this documentary. Uh, God will give you more days, more years in good health, serving the Lord, and seeing joyful things in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, brethren, we are to pray at this time, uh, and I want to appreciate God that we have in-house tonight so many anointed children of the Most High God. Exhortation and prayers. Why do we have to come together for a time like this? Well, it's an instruction and admonition according to Psalm 90 verse 12. And it's for the whites. It's for the people that the Lord loves. And David was one of them. And he considered all that has been happening. Just like you are supposed to be at a time like this. Just like we have seen our daddy, he has done all the days of his life. He says, so teach us. We need somebody to teach us. If we are not taught, every... It's okay. Every day, we just be like the usual days. But like we've been looking at the screenshots that we've been having, you will see consistency in growth in the growth of joy, in dutiful husbandhood, fatherhood, love for the community. Why do we have to number our days? This documentary is an evidence of that numbering. When you look at some of the photographs, you ever wonder what happened between that time and now. You can see the handsome young man, fully bearded, and all those kind of things. The days when men were boys. <laughs> and it gives joy to know that in those days, somebody was teaching our daddy, number your days. You will not remain like this forever. Don't mess up today because of tomorrow. And we want to bless God that he has yielded to the great teacher that he has applied his heart to wisdom. The wisdom that we are seeing today is that we can all gather together around him with beautiful testimonies and wish him decades more. Because when you look at him, you will discover that just like Caleb said to Moses, he said, give me the mountain. He said, look at me. I was speaking to you 45 years ago. I'm 75 now. I am a man of war. 
If he was not one, he will not say so. If he cannot run 100 meters dash when the enemy is pursuing him, he will not say so. Uh, what my wife said, I didn't know she was going to say it. But while he was standing there, I looked at him. His shoulders are not drooping. His gait is still strong. At 80. And we have so many emergency young old men. But because God has helped him, uses this wisely. We can celebrate today. Why did David admonish us? Psalm 107 verse 1 makes us to know that the totality of our lives is supposed to be lived in thanksgiving to God. Because our life is not our own. Life is a loan. And every time you realize that life is a loan, you will not beat your chest as if you are the one that has tomorrow in your hands. All we know is that whether the devil likes it or not, because we are in Christ, our tomorrows will be all right. So he said there, he said we should give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because if the Lord has not been good, we will not have today to celebrate. He's good, he's merciful, he's compassionate, and it's not for just a season. The Bible says it's forever. I want you to know that as the Lord lives and as Jesus tarries, what we are doing today is opening another chapter of the goodness of God, of the mercies of God, and the favor of God in the life of our daddy. Whether you say amen or you don't say amen, it is established. Because the Bible says I should speak a word and it shall be established. And the light will shine. And that is what we need to speak. We need to speak the word of God. Sir, God is open to you. Chapter of his goodness. Chapter of his mercy. You thought you have known mercy. But God will show you new dimension of mercy from today. Now because you have a testimony. Our sister was giving the testimony. said, I saw my father in this man. And I wish my father was like this man. Who will go out of his way and bless me and encourage me that is a show of mercy and the bible says to the one that is merciful god will show himself merciful lift your voice lord say father concerning your son that we are celebrating today let him enjoy many more years of mercy many more years of your goodness if you tarry lord jesus let that be his testimony in the mighty name of Jesus, you pray that prayer, let God hear your amen loud and clear. Yeah. This same David, just like if we have time to share with us a toast, to respond to the toast. In Psalm 103 that we know by heart, you see, you need to look at your life. I wish we had started since three or two. Because at 80 years, you should do it decade by decade. Thanking God for what he did in the first decade. Even though like we had tonight, for the first decade, he was still sucking breast for most of the time. <laughs> he could not remember the time he said it. But he knew he said it. Because that is just the truth. That he was not abandoned. And we look at the time of his youth. The civil war. He did not die. God kept him somewhere and preserved him because he had to touch so many lives. But more importantly, look at the testimonies from four, I mean, Food Gospel Businessmen Fellowship to other fellowship. I pray that this testimony of your knowing the Lord and serving the Lord, we abide with you till Jesus comes in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And that all that the Lord has done for you, the enemy will not be able to undo any in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we want to again appreciate God because it takes a man that has had faith in God to keep standing. I know he has passed through trying times, but is it God preserved him so that that which he has deposited in him will be of use to this generation, the generation of the millennials. I mean, I don't know what we cry about talking about the millennia. I wish they were here to come and see all these photographs. It's the world that is changing. But those promises 
God has given you the grace to hold them fast. And the times you were supposed to waver, you did not waver. And that's just because God wants to pass through you some of his virtues to generations that are coming. And it's a prayer for you tonight. All that you have held on to concerning the Lord without wavering, they are not going to end with you, but they will pass across to generations that God has raised through you and those coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now if you accept that, let God hear your amen loud and clear. Amen. Because in Hebrews 10, 23, he said, let us hold fast. Hold it fast, the profession of faith, without wavering. In the redeemed Christian church of God today, is making impact. When there are issues that border on doctrine, that border on teaching, we can refer to him. There's not so many elders that are in this category. But you see, there is no one that God does not have a plan for. But for aligning the plan of God, the one that is faithful, that has promised to work in your life, I, we are praying for you tonight that many of those promises that are yet to be fulfilled in your life, in your lifetime, not a single one of them will go unfulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look at Abraham. He lived longer than that he has lived. And the Bible says, Abraham did not stagger. He believed God. And the miracle did not happen until well after 90 into the 100. Now, it is a point, sir, that there are so many more things that God wants to establish through your life. And it's a prayer for you that you will not fall, you will not fail, but that God will establish all those things through you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Genesis 17, 21, God never forgets. It's, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at the set time in the next year. This year that you are entering to is a year that all that the Lord has said, said to you, they are coming to pass. Because the set time for you to enjoy the fellowship, the blessedness of the fellowship of God has come. And nothing shall prevent you from enjoying them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to stretch your hand because it's uh, exhortation and prayer. Because we don't have other time. Lift your voice and say, Father, Father. all your precious promises to your son, bring them to come to pass now. Just like you promised Abraham and you did not fail. All the things that you have promised him that he's holding on to. Miracles that blows the mind. Father, release them now. As congregation of the elect, we cry to you today. The Lord embarrass him with your blessings this year. Settle him as he enters to this new year. Into new, this new dispensation. Father, do them to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Now, when I pause some of those promises, you need to keep them in view. In Psalm 90, verse 14 to 16. Psalm 91, 14 to 16. You see, the things you have done, they cannot but speak in your life. They have to speak. Now, God said it, and it has become like an anthem. We say it from time to time. Because you have set your love on God. Probably you didn't remember. But you see, the love that does not touch your pocket is a fake love. When you love somebody, you put an investment into the life of the person. <laughs> Just like I had the privilege of preaching this morning. When the pastor asked that about 20 naira, I can't remember how the question was framed. And everybody said, no, whether they should ban 20 naira. And it just dawned on me. We should put our action where our words are. How many people will be able to look at what Pastor Oyoma just said and say, well, don't worry. I will be responsible. I think it's for the altar, sir. And so you think any negative altar will begin to speak in the generation of a man like this? Or, I mean, for his children? No. You invest on the altar of God, that altar will keep speaking. Altar speak. And that's where we should know where to invest in. 
So I pray tonight, because you have set your love upon God, He will deliver you and generations coming after you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now you, are, you should do part of your job. It's not to, do, to level this mountain, but to say amen when I pray, or for you to pray that prayer. I said the Lord will show great deliverance to him. Still to come in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Now, we don't know how God will do it, but it's the promise of God. If you think, sir, you have been set on high, no, wait. God is still going to decorate your life with many more blessings. He says, I will set him on high, spiritually and physically. Look at what uh, I don't know whether she or somebody said that is strong is older than Mr. President and his gait is firmer than that of Mr. President and when he speaks he speaks very coherently and when he comes to minister he ministers with energy and passion if I tell some of you to speak like I'm speaking you begin to pant he doesn't pant too <laughs> God we continue to renew your strength so that the high place that he wants you to occupy you will occupy and you use them gracefully in the mighty name of Jesus yeah. if that's a prayer from your heart to let God hear your amen now yeah. now you see because he knows God I was sharing with some brethren and incidentally I mentioned his name I mentioned that the Kumer's name I mentioned some names. That if you are to say in this church, these people just go and meet for your needs. Let them pray. How many of you think your prayers will not be answered? They said their prayers will be answered. Why? It's just here. Because they know the name of the Lord. They know the name of the Lord. We have not seen them join B plus C and say it is giving them something else. Because you have known my name, you shall call upon me and I will answer you. I want to decree in agreement with all the brethren here that from now on you will never pray a prayer that God will not answer in the mighty name of Jesus. And because of this landmark event, we are decreeing into your life that when you open your mouth to pray for anybody, for anything, the Lord will answer and people will know you that this is the man that God answers his prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. The Lord says he will be with you. Amen. The Lord says he will deliver you. Amen. And we need so many deliverance. Because, you see, so many people are expecting that you will be shaking and something. No, 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 no. God has delivered you. Amen. Whatever people are imagining that we come with old age, with this age, to you. I speak in agreement with the brethren here. That you are receiving deliverance from them all tonight in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Lord has honored you. He will yet honor you more in the name of Jesus. He will satisfy you with long life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you will never lose the salvation of God. In the name of Jesus. Now, you know, we can go on and on and on. But I want to stop and pray. And I want the people to pray. In Isaiah 46 verse 6. We can never say it enough. It said to old age. Even to old age, I am he. I am that I am. And so when the ancient of days is with a man, you will never feel old in your body, in your soul, in your spirit. And so we are saying to you today, because I am will remain with you, you will never lack courage in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. What did he say? He said, I will carry you. It's not a man that will carry you. When the Lord is the one carrying you, we keep bouncing. You see, some of you that are redeemed, you know, you will know the man of God. When he comes to the altar, we do like this. And do like this. And we hail him, king of the boys. And he's getting to his 90. Over 90. Thank you very much. So we have not seen anything. If we come on the altar as he's going, he passes by our side, we do like this, like this, like this, and they say, King of the boys. That is an evidence that God is carrying somebody. You don't need people to begin to carry you at a skelter. For the remaining days of your life, sir, you will not need any man to be carrying you around in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Because he has promised, and we bring it to pass. He said to over here to old age. Now, if you want God to carry you too, let me pray for you to old age to over here. God will carry you too in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's not only saying he will carry you. He said, because it's one that has made you, he will bear. What is he going to bear? Everybody. So you are not going to carry body that will make you sad in the spirit or in the physical. Yeah. And so from today, the one that I am that says that we carry everybody, your own body, mommy's body, the children's body, grandchildren's body, the church body, societal body, community body, God will carry them for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. You will not serve under the pressure of anything in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And what is small, when people set trust for you, God will deliver you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Now, what are we seeing? We are seeing what we still want to continue to see. We are seeing the fruit in your life. And according to Psalm 1 verse 3, God has made a promise for you. Because you will sit where you are supposed to sit. We have given a testimony about you today. And that's a testimony of integrity. God loves people with integrity. There are some people in their old age when they tell you, hey, you need to go and check it and pray and pray and pray and pray again. They are not people of their words. I, I don't want to give a testimony, but I know when he says this is this, you will find it like that. He is diligent. He tries to find out things and stand on the truth. So standing where you are supposed to stand, sitting where you are supposed to sit, taking cancer where, he says, you shall be as the tree planted by the rivers. Now you will continue to bring forth fruit in every season. And what is more, in Psalm 92 verse 13, because you are planted in the house of God, you shall continue to flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. What did he say for this? He said, you will still bring forth fruit in old age and you shall be fat and flourishing. So we welcome you, sir, to your season of flat fatness and season of flourishing. So let's stand up and begin to pray unto him. Let's stretch up our hands to him. Let's pray that the almighty God that has made him to see this day, he will cause him to see many more glorious days ahead. He will never see an inglorious day in his life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So pray to God, say, Father, give him the privilege of seeing many more glorious days. Anything that will remove your glory from being shed abroad in his life, Father, take out of his way. Take out of his life. Take out of around him in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we pray for him today that, Lord, because we have welcomed him to his glorious days, Father, let your glory surround him. Crown his head with your glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you are not tired of praying, let God hear you say amen. amen. Ask God today that we want it to keep flourishing. We don't want it to begin to diminish. So lift your voice, say, Father, Father, for the remaining years for your son, he shall keep flourishing. He will flourish spiritually. He will flourish physically. He will flourish financially. He will flourish ministerially. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Tell God, Lord, don't let him know famine. Don't let him know recession. Don't let him see evil days. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you everlasting Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. The Lord said in the book of Isaiah. He says as your days. So shall your strength be. 80 years. So you should have plenty of strength. So let's decrease. Say Father. As the days of your son increase, increase him in strength, increase him in health. Lord, at this time, he will not become sickly. He will not begin to visit doctors from place to place. Lord, like you are with Moses, whose vision did not grow dim at age 120, and his strength did not abate. Father, the remaining years that your son will spend on earth, his vision will not grow dim, his strength will not go down. His intellect will not diminish. His articulation will not diminish. Whatever they call the disease of old age, because you are the one carrying him, he does things that we miss him. They will miss him. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
I want you to stretch your hand towards him and say, Father, this is your son. We finish well. We finish strong. We fulfill his assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. He will please you, Lord. And any time the rapture will take place, Father, he will be raptured in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I request uh, Father and the Lord, the regional evangelist, to wrap up that prayer on our behalf. The oldest, the one who started the whole universe, and the one who knows what is going to be the end of all, the greatest who created the great ones. We are grateful unto you, they said, that the son is celebrating. Daddy, I want to thank you particularly for one thing, that this man did not lose his wife. We are grateful. Oh, oh, oh. we are grateful. Blessed be your holy name. Sir, you did one thing for my, for, for my daughter, one of my children. You didn't know. And you don't know me. You don't know how we are together. I decree, anywhere your children go, they will never know hardship. Yeah. And your children shall be greater 100% than you are great now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And you never have thought over any of them. Yeah. And you see your grand, great grandchildren in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And there shall be no sorrow added to your joy of today. Yeah. And if there is any evil agenda that will make you sorrowful over your wife, over your children, the Almighty God will take over. Amen. He will turn the table against the enemies. Amen. There is no way by which you clamor for a man. There is no way by which you talk about a man. There is nothing you can say good about a man. Somebody must be somewhere. They say, what are they talking about? Uh, is that, that, <laughs> are they talking about that man? <laughs> they don't know him now. They don't know him. We are us. Jesus did not satisfy all. There is nobody who can satisfy man. Those who did not see you, that they are satisfied about you, or that you cannot please, that you just want to please your God, they will never be able to, 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 to cut you down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Are people you are not saying amen? Yeah. All of you that are here, some of you come to see. Just let's go and see. Those who are looking, or they are watching for one thing to happen so that they can laugh. 
God will disappoint them. God will disappoint them. God will disappoint them. In the village where you were born, there is no way by which man will not step on toes of, one and, of, of somebody. Whose toe you have stepped upon? Knowingly or knowingly, or they, you came together and they said, okay, it's all right, it's settled, it's settled. But they are still looking for a day of retaliation. They will never see that day in Jesus' name. Amen. Such a kitchen will never come. Amen. You will not bury any of your children. Amen. You will not bury your wife. Amen. All good things, all great things, the level of greatness God has proposed for your life and your children, none shall fail in Jesus' name. Amen. We are joining together in agreement and we say the way God did it for Job and he never had sorrow again in his life, may it be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your joy will never know bound. Your joy will never know bound. You continue to move forward. In the celebration of your children, your grandchildren, your great great grandchildren, you will be there alive in the name of Jesus Christ. But I will say thank you. We say we are grateful unto you. On behalf of your son, we say we are grateful. On behalf of the family, we say we are grateful. Thank you for you are a great God. Blessed be your holy name. We all together, when the trumpets are sung, we shall be rapturable. We will make heaven. We will make heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. But I will say thank you. Thank you for your son. You have used in using the word of life that you will bless him the more. You will not allow him to be down. And all his detractors, you shall tread on them with the sole of your feet in Jesus' name. Amen. And your anointing will not diminish. Thank you for your love, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And the people of God will say better, amen. Amen. Someone that is so happy with this family, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. If a man is given a gift, he has the right to utilize it the way he wants. But if you are given a loan at the appointed time, it will be asked. The owner of the person that gave you a loan can request. If you didn't leave this place with any word, but just remember that word, your life. Life, people say, is a gift. It's not a gift. Life is a loan. Every one of us here, life is a loan. And someday, the owner of that life will ask of you, let us live here without all that life is a loan. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have I turned to someone and say you make sense? I'm not too serious. I'm gonna smile small. So Alicia's daddy, please can you come on? Now you can cut your cake. Mommy supports you. They say behind every successful man, there is a pretty lady. Authentic mommy. You are looking good. I feel like taking you away. Daddy, should I take her away? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Here we have three different kind of cake. We have the word of God in the middle. Praise the Lord. And daddy is going to cut this cake with the support of mommy. You know if mommy is not there, forget to oh, all this other praise daddy. So not praise mommy, so they vex. You know you need to praise mommy because if mommy not touch daddy for where concern now. Daddy will not do well. Praise the Lord. So, as Daddy wants to cut this cake, Mommy will be supporting Daddy. 
For your information, mommy's birthday was on Saturday. So both of them are celebrating. Praise the Lord. And those of you that came to celebrate with them, celebration will not cease in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to stay in the name of Jesus, and then we cut the cake. Give us Jake. He. he. Please speak out. Hex. Yes. You. Hex. What do you have? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Daddy. later. God bless us really good. Praise the Lord.
Operation Summer. The Bible tells us that uh, we have 70 years. We may get to 80 if we have the strength. And that strength flows from our willingness your diligence to keep the statutes and commands of God. I thank God for this family. I don't know Oliver Opera. I don't know Luda Opera. I don't know their four men who are their children. I know the opera's family. And so I'm going to give an integral toast. And the toast is unto the praise of the Almighty God. The common toast my children do for me is bread. I need toasted bread. And for these days, you must be careful when you send them to toast bread for you. Because disco may take the lights, and they will leave the thing there. And before they come back, disco must have brought back the lights, and the toasted bread will become a bond bread. This integral toast I'm doing, please. When I complete a chapter, I will say praise the Lord. All you can help me do is to say hallelujah two times and amen. Opera is not looking young. Oliver is not looking young. Because he was sucking mommy's breast for 10 years. He's looking young because... He had children who were regarded as one block of an integral family, obedient to answer at the call. And who brought those children? It's my beloved Lutgard. Somebody says she's a German. A German. Please don't make that mistake again. If you say she was, I will not tolerate that. She is a full-blooded Nigerian, born in the eastern part of this country, discovered in Germany. You have said most of what I would have said. In 1905, am I correct? 1995. There was a uh, scatter scatter in DAC. People were retrenched. I can't remember any foreign lady that remained back. They all left Nigeria to their places. And what they told their husband, if you want to visit, you can come and visit. Not this woman. Not this Nigerian. Thank God for the pastor who was trying to give us a little view. We know she was involved in an accident where she was abandoned to rot away. That would have been a very good excuse to leave Oliver to go to sucking breast again. But we thank God because the breast is of that time was no longer available. And that's the ideal breast he was sucking. So for this wonderful woman, caretaker, God's gift, praise the Lord! Amen. I thank God that uh, Christians enjoy what politicians don't enjoy. 
Melaye was told that uh, he had no grassroots support. And so he will leave becoming a senator. When we go to the Bible, the Bible says, if you cannot bring up your family the right way, you don't qualify. And so you cannot rise up to become a Christian leader if you don't have a foundation. And for these wonderful children, God has given to them. And they have learned and passed on the nourishment, combination nourishment, total nourishment. And these children are still around today to hear their call and answer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please don't forget now. I thought it was a small poem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are combining the three chapters because of time. Please, I hope the wine for the toast is being shared, served in cups, because I'm coming to the closing point of this. I do not have more to say than to possibly emphasize what had been said. Emphasis leads to memorization. Memorization leads to practice. And practice leads to perfection. I want to simply say that our elder, my senior elder, that was why I dropped my ambition to celebrate my birthday today, one of the reasons. But there was a condition that there may be a second showing of this next year here on my behalf. I want to call you people as my witnesses. Elder Oliver, I will call him simply a righteous whistleblower. Righteous whistleblower. If you they do, nyama nyama, don't go near. If you are doing backhand, don't go near. He will first of all confront you and the whistle will go. And that is for the purpose of saving my life and your life. I believe that that's a summary qualification of who he is. And please, brethren, we have come into the practice of Christianity in Nigeria where you have to identify yourself. Now we are talking of whistleblowing. And I've seen that our Christianity have gone to the extent of not just watching for the day. It's gone to the point of watching for the hour. The five foolish virgins were prepared for the day, but they were not there during the hour. And so all we have said about Oliver Okara is simply for us to learn the question or the situation of being ready, waiting for the Lord. And for the entirety of this family who have given us one challenge or the other, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother said it. And I want to repeat it. He says, as your days, so shall be your what? Your strength. And that means when we are reading mathematics, that your length of days will be directly proportional to your strength. And remember, I have defined that strength. Your ability and willingness and devotedness to keep the word and the commandments of God. And for this family, led by the family head, and uh, Oliver Opera, can we toast to the glory of God, for the abundant mercy and compassion of God, for the graciousness of God towards them, 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And our prayer is even as the pastor prayed, I wrote down what he was praying before I came here. That tells you that the spirit is one. And that tells you the endorsement of heaven of what we are doing here today. And the simple prayer we offer is a duplicate of what he has said. Even as we pray, Almighty God, there are days are in your hands. And Lord, as you have preserved them up to this time, when you have made us together to toast your name on their behalf, our prayer, Lord, that this should be our portion. Amen. And for unto the almighty God, when our day is matched up with our strength, as unto this family, sickness will have no way. Failures will have no way. Yes, almighty God. The fullness of the Lord will show them as a mirror, showing the righteousness, showing the majesty, showing the greatness, showing the decency, showing the marvelness of God's people. They shall be models. Sustain them, Lord, to be so. In Jesus' name, Amen. we therefore toast in accordance with our prayer unto their health. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please, can you clean your glasses now? Cheers. Amen. So the, the senior pastors we will to toast with him, toast with the celebrants. Chama me, 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 chama me
Those are the steps for eight. I mean, for eighty years. Praise the Lord. And we are going to the final part of the program. I want to to my assistant to do that introduction. Hallelujah. Swagalicious daddy, your dance makes sense. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to call on our daddy to take the words of thanks. Authentic daddy. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
for the salvation of my soul. I got born again in 1958, precisely. In fact, I should say 56. Then I said I'm too young to hear the word of God and beg. Within that two years, God dealt with me. Before I, before I knew it, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit before baptism of uh, water baptism. Because when I came back, I came back 100% youth talk. Like I used to tell them when I was teaching Sunday school. Repentance then was when you repent, you repent. 360 degrees turn about. But today, you can repent 15 degrees, repent 25 degrees, 30 degrees. Yes, what is still repenting? Repent from drinking today. Next year, you repent, repent from smoking. Next year, you repent from. But I thank God that up till today, the Lord has kept me. It's not by my own might. It's not because I know how to pray. It is of His own mercy. Like what I said here, well, I normally see this yesterday. I know today I was sharing with somebody. I said, when somebody dies, you must hear good news. That this person was so good, he did this, he did that, only as his death beside the coffin. But I thank you that I can hear that one today. Somebody said that there was something for him. Thank you all for coming. I thank our pastor. Who I learned much from as I walk under them, pity my friend, my good friend, as a governor is not there. Uh, the man who will call me midnight, maybe could not sleep, he will phone me. Are you going to talk? I said, by this time. I said, ah, oh no. He could have said something. Because that was the man that I walked so close with. I thank God that today it has pleased him at this age that I am still in the Lord. I thank him that I told my children, I said, none of you, you can't come. I'm telling you one thing. I will celebrate my 90th birthday. Amen. You people must come with your grandchildren, with my grandchildren, Amen. and so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when I look at the thing, the way things are today, I say, God, I still have areas what to do for you. Amen. I'm not ready to go yet. Amen. I have in my own plan things I want to do for the Lord, and if it pleases Him, and if Christ does not come, I will celebrate my church birthday. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for surprising me. That is not for you today. <laughs> like that Gio said, he said, this wife, he has. He said, I tell the Holy Spirit, he said, I love the Holy Spirit without her. I couldn't have been doing what I have been. God knows why, according to the Bible, whoever finds a wife, that I have to find my own up till Germany. <laughs> For the serious thing. Yes. Now I know why. Brethren, to be frank, what is happening here today? After when I came, I looked. This place, I was surprised. The thing was bringing quiet. Look, tell me what are you doing? <laughs> Even the venue, cab, Pastor Muda uh, uh, phoned me from Lagos that today is elders, they have meeting. I said, what about it? That is on my birthday card. That is on 25th. I was embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what doing everything. What are you doing? Tell me no. 
say, don't worry. It's a surprise. I don't know that kind of surprise. In fact, if not for today, by the time I got to my oh, we are surprised I'll leak it now. <laughs> what did you want? You wanted to blindfold me and carry me to the place before you open my eyes and say, ah, this is the place. I thank God for this one. <laughs> Brethren, he is special. Very, very special. And, ah, I think I will still celebrate another thing before 19th birthday. Because we are married now for 42 years. So in the next eight years, I will celebrate another one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I thank you all. My prayer is that the Almighty God will keep each and every one of us strong, healthy, fed, physically and spiritual in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming. On your own day, men will gather around you and they will give surprises like this for you all also. Thank you and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Precious Father, once again, we thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be blessed a day like this. And for the privilege of our family to celebrate its own 80th birthday. Glory be to your name, mighty Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as we brought everyone together here, as we we'll believe it, we pray that you take everyone who will safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, blessed Father. Amen. That you grant us more grace to have you better. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
39 years ago this year, my dad married my mom. And Mr. Okike was his best man at the wedding. His wonderful wife, Mrs. Okike, has been a senior lecturer at the University of Sunderland for a very long time. And it is due to the kindness of that family that Sunderland became my home for three years, and Sunderland became Tona's home for 15 years. And it is the University of Sunderland that put their parts together to bring us here today. Now, to say directly about Tona, he's a very intelligent man. Everybody that has uh, dealt with him knows that. They also know what's coming. He also has his blonde moments. And it's not just a baldy man being envious of people with hair. <laughs> I remember Tona visiting me once in, Sunderland, in London from Sunderland. And he just had to book his way back to Sunderland. The first night, after booking the National Express bus, he arrived at the train station in King's Cross. So that one went. <laughs> the next day, he booked. He now knew that National Express is from Victoria, not King's Cross. <laughs> so he got to Victoria at 10 p.m., but he had booked the 10 a.m. bus for that day. <laughs> so the third day, he went. He now knows the difference between a.m. and p.m. <laughs> but he was still late for it. And this time he decided, I'm booking it and I'm staying here. <laughs> and that is how he got back to Sunderland then. My brother is also full of restless energy, always rushing, in a hurry to do everything. Uh, a typical story that happened many times in my family, when my father would ask my brother, okay, here's the dining, please sweep this place. Within two minutes he has finished. My father would say, how can you sweep the dining? You didn't move any of the chairs, the table, nothing. You just swept around it. Yeah, Papa, he will take the broom and now sweep under the table, under the dishes, and scatter the place he has swept before. <laughs> this brought about one of the most common phrases we heard growing up, where my father would say, gra, 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 typical to chuku. <laughs> He's the only one of the four of us to leave secondary school from SS2. He didn't finish, he wanted to come to UK. The rest of us, we finished. In fact, he's been in such a hurry, he was two months premature. He couldn't wait. Now, I don't know whether it is this rushing and restless energy that makes him so slim. Because me and him, I believe we eat the same amount of food. It's true, it looks like I like food more than him, but not true. <laughs> At four months old, he had stopped drinking baby milk and insisted that his best food was eba. <laughs> uh, for those who aren't Nigerians, eba is something that we eat with our hands. It looks like uh, mashed potato in complexion, but not in texture. Normally, you would not feed that to toddlers. But he would not eat anything other than Eba. Every single day, he must have Eba. And when he's on his rocking chair, hitting his spoon, if you try and give him rice, you try and give him anything else, 
it is not going to be resolved. He will keep hitting that thing until he's given Eba. And his love for Eba still remains. Uh, one evening, my father saw Tona running around the house. He said, what are you running around the house for? He said, we have match against the class ahead of us tomorrow. When he came back in the evening, he said, how did the game go? He said, we lost 11-0. <laughs> so having two older brothers, it's true. He was roughed up, bullied. Maybe beaten up a few times. When his younger one came on and he felt, oh, now it's my turn to behave like my older brothers did. You know what they do with the last born? He had cover from both elder brothers. He had cover from his parents. So he's being bullied from the top but cannot bully <laughs> below. I think that's one of the reasons Tona is very diplomatic. He has learned how to deal with those more powerful than him, up and above, uh, up and below. Because Tona is the kind of person that will come to visit me after not seeing me in a while. He will give me one kind of look. He will say, you are enjoying life. I think he's complimenting me. Then the other brother will step in, give me the same kind of look. Say, so, boy, you are getting fatal. So diplomacy is very much, very, very much part of, part of him. Um, in fact, sometimes when I sit down and think about my family, I have to use the British word, we're very weird. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you people's family is not like that, but my own, we're very, I'm sure if we started life by having to do interview who we want to be in our family, I'm not sure everybody will pass. <laughs> everybody will not pass. But in our family, we have, a willingness to forgive and a willingness to try again. And I see that over and over and over again. And for that reason, I would not pick any other family to be born into again. <laughs>